What's up? Welcome into the Morning Line, a Monday edition. Corey and Benny coming at you about a week and a half until kickoff of the 2019 NFL season. Don't forget FantasyGuru.com. Draft guide on sale now for all your fantasy football needs. Seasonal, elite sports betting, all your wins that we racked up over the weekend. And then, of course, don't forget the DFS side of it over at Elite Fantasy where they are getting ready hot and heavy right now, full steam ahead for week one of the NFL season. Benny, how was week zero? How was this weekend, Benny? This this was – we're going to point back to this weekend as a seminal moment in the fantasy football and in in, in a lot of things because uh, this was a hell of a weekend. Yeah, I mean, there are a couple interesting stories we could talk about, right? I mean, I think there was uh, – I think there was some big news that kind of happened over the weekend. While, uh, while people were on the clock. Yeah. Exactly. A lot of people were in the middle of their drafts when it actually happened, too, which is pretty crazy. Um, Yeah, I mean, you know, it it is what it is. I had basically zero shares of Andrew Luck because I don't normally pay up at quarterback. You know, I have reached once or twice up to the top to grab Pat Mahomes in a couple drafts. But other than that, you know, most of my guys are guys I'm getting at the 10th round or later. So that didn't hurt me too much. Uh, We talked about Lamar Miller. And Lamar Miller basically having zero upside and not really being a guy that I wanted to target at that point. So didn't have much of that. So really, I kind of got through this weekend pretty much unscathed, which is more than I could say for a lot of other people, apparently. Yeah, um, I went through, I did a stock report yesterday, and I thought I was more exposed to T.Y. Hilton than I was. Only got him in two leagues. Uh, With the Andrew Luck retirement, let's start there, Benny. Um, obviously it takes place, it goes down, people are on the clock, and this, this happens, you know, I've always been an Andrew Luck guy, Andrew Luck support, I think it was, I don't know if it was me and you talking, or me and somebody else, uh, recently, I said if you was to put every player in the NFL back in the draft, I would take Andrew Luck at 1-1, because of, you know, just a great young quarterback, but I've always been very critical of the Indianapolis Colts, they've mismanaged Andrew Luck's injury situations over the years, and never gave him an offensive line, and literally left him out there to get killed, and carry this thing by himself, and uh, he basically couldn't do it no more, Benny. Yeah, I mean, I listen, no knock on him, right? We talk about it all the time with professional athletes. Like, y- y- your job is to go make – this is a job. You know, you go out there to make money. You go out there to support your family, and especially with football players, like, you want to be able to walk away and enjoy the rest of your life, you know? I mean, we've seen, unfortunately, a lot of these guys who have to deal with things like concussions and stuff like that and just – you know, aching, broken bones and and things for the rest of their lives. Andrew Luck's a smart guy. He was a Stanford grad, you know, smart. Probably would have went to college and gotten a good degree, even if he wasn't an amazing football player. Um, You know, he has other things that he wants to do in his life. The guy made almost $100 million playing football. He's 29 years old. He's going to walk away and go see the world with his beautiful wife. I have no problem with that from a player perspective. What we want to talk about here, though, Corey, is the fantasy impact of this, right? Because this is a big deal for fantasy. Yeah, no, it, it, it is. And the, the thing about it is, well, first of all, you take Andrew Luck off the board, a guy who's gone as high as quarterback two, especially mm-hmm. before the injuries started to mount him a pile up like that. So you take him off the board, that's one less guy. And you look at this, the pieces surrounding him, mainly T.Y. Hilton, who tweeted out yesterday, you know what I mean? And, bro, let's talk about how he feels as if he's lost his best friend. You know what I'm saying? How he can't even stomach to think about what's going on. Um, I think we're overreacting, though. You know what I'm saying? I want to be the, the voice of reason when it comes to T.Y. Good. 5-4, what I heard yesterday. 6-2, what I saw yesterday. That's extreme value right there. I think we drop him around maybe to 4, and I think that's where it's probably a good spot for his ADP. We'll go through some player names, me and you, Benny, and, um, and try to figure it out that way. But I, 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 the fifth, sixth round, he does not, like, okay, like, you know what I mean? Like, he's not all of a sudden the play, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Still the best player on that football team, you know what I mean? Well, even more so now. Yeah. I kept, I kept telling y'all, yeah, look for the, 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 the discount. Brissett is not horrible. People point back to what Brissett did last time. The O-line was terrible. Now yeah. that's the strength. Mm-hmm. And now you have Frank Reich in there, who actually is a backup quarterback who knows what he's doing. The Philadelphia Eagles won the Super Bowl with Nick Foles. Frank Reich and Jacoby Brissett will figure it out. Frank Reich is a backup quarterback. 
backup quarterbacks know how to relate to other backup quarterbacks. Even, you know, the thing that you said that, I, that I'm going to harp on the most here is the O-line situation, right? Because the last time we saw Jacoby Brissett as the quarterback, he had the same line that got Andrew Luck killed in the first place. <laughs> yes, the quarterback. The line, the whole point of why everybody thought they were going to be so good this year is they basically spent the last two years building a very, not even a competent offensive line, an above average offensive line, one that we consider to be one of the top, you know, probably top third in the league kind of offensive line, maybe even as high as five or six. So I think it's a much different situation. People who are going back and looking at the numbers that T.Y. had the last time Jacoby Brissett was the starter, it's kind of apples and oranges here. You know what I mean? I I think the offense is better as a whole. I think the line is better as a whole. You know, and and Brissett has gotten some more experience as as well. So, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why you can expect that to be better. Um, As for the draft thing, I wanted to kind of give you these numbers right now. Going into, you know, the Andrew Luck retirement situation, T.Y. Hilton was going off the board around wide receiver 11, around pick number 28. So what I, want, what I did is I went to the NFFC ADP. You know how you can track the NFFC ADP? Um, to me, that's one of the best ones to look at because people are actually putting legit money on the board, and it's a lot of guys that know what the hell they're doing. So it, it makes a lot more sense to use that than something like a Yahoo ADP or whatever. So just from basically the time of the Andrew Luck announcement until today, T.Y. Hilton is now going off the board wide receiver 17. So we dropped from wide receiver 11 to wide receiver 17. And he dropped from an ADP of around 28 to an ADP of 44. So you're talking, like you were saying, about a round, a round and a half is what he's dropping down right now. But ADP 44 still makes him a fourth round pick. You know, like if you see T.Y. Hilton available in the fifth or sixth round of your draft, don't even think about it. Just go grab him. Yeah, like just go grab him. Jump on it. As a wide receiver three flex option, even as a wide receiver two, I don't mind it. Now, clearly he's not in the wide receiver one conversation no more. Uh, Benny, let me go to – let's start with Julian Edelman. T.Y. Hilton or Julian Edelman? I'd probably still go Edelman. Hilton or Brandon Cooks? I like him more than Cooks. Because to me, those three wide receivers over there, they just – there's no upside with any of them because there's all three of them, you know? I agree. Uh, T.Y. or Stephon Diggs? Ooh. That's interesting. I'm more of a feeling guy, so I'd probably go T.Y. Okay. T.Y. or Robert Woods? Again, I mean, the same problem I have with all the, the Rams wide receivers is going to be the same problem I have. It's like all three of them have capped upside because of the other two. T.Y. or Kenny Galladay? T.Y. Easy. Nice. T.Y. or Chris Godwin? I'm probably still going to go T.Y., but that may come back and bite me in the ass. The Godwin hype train is, 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 uh, is, is, is full, bull, full, full, full steam ahead, Benny. And that's my thing. is like I'm not paying top dollar for him over T.Y. FFWC on the weekend, Benny, 212. 212? 212. On Godwin? Yes. Uh, again, I mean, we talked about it last week, Corey. It's like, where's, what's the upside of that pick? I, you know, like he, there is none. You're buying all the risk. Yeah, you, you basically need him to not only play well, but at 212, you need him to have, like, an all-pro caliber season. He's got to be, like, a top – I mean, what, what was – 212 has got to be, what, like, wide receiver nine? Like, you, you need him to be a top ten wide receiver at that point. Yeah, and he, with Mike Evans and O.J. Howard there. Yeah, he's not even number one on his team. You're asking him to be a top ten in the league. I, I, can't, I can't sign off. I'm curious, Benny. Let me, matter of fact, I'll look it up right now. I wonder what his price is for week one, DFS. You know what? I haven't even made any lineups yet. I'm not going to lie. I looked at it the first day they came out and threw a dummy lineup in, and I haven't looked at it since, so I don't even know. Uh, well, let me, let me pull it up right quick because I find it curious to see. What would you guess? I'd guess he's a mid-range guy. So, like, are you looking DraftKings or Fandle? I'm looking at DraftKings. DraftKings, he's probably in the five, 5K range. Oh, this is a preseason game. Hold on one second. And my guess would be DraftKings, he's probably in a 5K range. Fandle, he's probably like one of those 65 to 7,000, like 6,500 receivers. I mean, you can't expect him to be the, the $8,000 receiver, right? Because he's the number two on his team. Like, if there's going to be an $8,000 receiver on Tampa, it's going to wind up being, you know, Mike Evans. But oh, he's. Godwin's salary for week one, Benny, is on DraftKings is 6,200. That's expensive, to be honest, for another receiver. 
you know, that's expensive. I, w- I probably won't have any shares of it, to be honest with you. Not at 6,200. At 6,200, you're talking, you're going to need to, you need to come up with like 24 points out of him. So you're going to need a hundred yards would give you 13, a touchdown, 19. You're going to need like six catches for a hundred yards and a touchdown just to kind of pay off a $6,200 salary. That's, I mean, it's not out of the question, but it's, it's kind of asking a lot. That is asking a lot. Uh, I would agree with you on that one. So I, I think the hype train all around is all uh, looking upwards. Um, let me just uh, throw it out there. T.Y. Hilton or Amari Cooper? That's a tough one. I, I, that's a tough one that I'd really have to consider. I, I'd probably go Amari Cooper there personally. Yeah, um, I would probably lean Amari Cooper also. Um, they, it's not – I really don't see what the big discount is. The only thing is, what do you feel about the Rams receivers? If you like the Rams receivers, then you like, then you move them under the Rams receivers. If you're like us, where the Rams receivers are a piece of a whole puzzle, then you keep T.Y. above him. Um, it would, a lot of people are going to say Godwin because Godwin's the hot new thing. Mm. Um, Kenny Galladay, I can see people going Galladay over T.Y. Hilton. Um, I would say he's probably in that Kenny Galladay range myself. Um, that's where I would go in Galladay. So, yeah, you, the discount probably is, Benny, from about 11 to 19, something like that. Yeah, well, that's what I said. I mean, he's going wide receiver 17. Yeah, that, I would say from 11 to, to maybe 14. Yeah, he went 17 was where the drop was this weekend. So we saw him drop about six spots in the wide receiver rankings. And, again, six spots in the wide receiver rankings at that point in the draft was only worth 16 picks. He went from ADP 28 to ADP 44. And you look at Andrew Luck, um, you know, well, it's nothing really to discuss. It's no drop. It's just dropped off the board. I mean, I, how, I don't think Andrew Luck is done for good. I think we'll see Andrew Luck again. I, 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 I really honestly don't know. I'm not going to speculate on it one way or another. Here's the question I ask, though. Like, is there any other piece of the Colts offense that we want to move up or move down? So, like, is Jacoby Brissett more than – I mean, to me, he's still just basically a quarterback, too, right? Like, he's yeah, back. Yeah, Brissett's five. a QB, too. Um, I wouldn't put Brissett on a fantasy team, but I would keep an eye on him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, like this. In a two-quarterback league, Brissett is, should be rostered. In a yes. one-quarterback one league, I would say that you, you, I would keep an eye on him. I could, see, I could see him being fantasy relevant at some point this season. Yeah, I, I still think he's – to me, he's still a quarterback too because, I mean, there are matchups where I think we'll play him. You know, or where you would want to play him if you got to pick him up as a streamer or something like that, or you get a quarterback that gets hurt. But I'm not going to go on a, on a one QB league. I'm not going to go use up a bench spot all season just to make sure that nobody else can pick him up. Like I don't exactly. think he's that. I don't think he's that strong of a play. No, um, I agree. Um, how, how about the other pass catchers though? I mean, you got Jack Doyle, you got Eric Ebron that people are I using. I think Eric Ebron red zone appeal is still there. I think that's something that's built into that offense. I don't think that's an accident. As far as Devin Funches, I think he takes a significant drop. Yeah, I mean, I would think not. Kind of like, uh, I don't know. Here's, here's the question, the only other real relevant question, in my opinion. What does this do to a Marlon Mack? It could open up the running game a little bit more because Brissett has some wheels on him. You could see them scheme it up to get, you know, to get both of these guys going in the right direction, kind of like what the Ravens plan on doing with Lamar Jackson, which my stock report, Lamar Jackson, who came out as a player I own the most. Crazy. Um, <laughs> that's interesting. So I'm, I'm locked in, Benny. Um, so I would look at it like that. Um, I would not discount Mac at all. Right now we see Mac going off as probably around somewhere around running back 20 and, and at running back 20 to 23 range. Yep. Um, right at the two, three turn is where I've been seeing him go all the time in these 12 teamers. I think he stays there. No yeah. reason. I'm not going to, I'm not going to start going for, would you like the, the rookie running backs, Sanders, Jacobs, and what's old boy name? Montgomery. Would you take any of the rookie running backs over Mac now? No way. I, I mean, to me, to me, Mac is still right around that turn right there. You know, like he's in, he's in the discussion. He's after like Mixon and Dalvin Cook. Um, he's with Aaron Jones. Like I would say that's right. Him. Yep, Aaron like that, yeah, and, and personally, this doesn't move him. This doesn't move the needle for me in either direction, right? Like, I'm not moving Mac up because of this news, but I also don't think I'm really moving him down. So, to me, he's still like, like here's the best way I can say this, Corey. Like, pick 25 is where you should start looking at Marlon Mack. 
If he's still there at the beginning of round three, that's around the time you should start looking at Marlon Mack, somewhere in there, along with, like I said, the Aaron Joneses and the Devonta Freemans. Like, those are the third-round running backs right there. Yep. I think he's in that mix. Uh, I would take I – would, I would keep him over Mark Ingram. Uh, Jimmy White, it depends on how you're building your roster. I think they're very similar, what they can do. But he's ahead of the rookies, in my opinion. Speaking of the rookies, I got a pretty good report yesterday on Josh Jacobs. They, he is going to get the football a lot. I'm not going to have him anywhere. Um, I was kind of off the kid. I don't want to say I'm having a change of heart. I still think the Raiders are not going to be up to par to, to, to maintain the kind of game flow that, they, that needs to be had. But he could be excellent. He should be excellent in short yardage. And um, he's going to get his fair share of receptions. He'll get a chance to touch the football a lot. Are they going to be positive touches? That's yet to be determined. Um, so that's where I'm at on that. So, um, you know, listen, the luck thing, it it's really comes down to T.Y. Hilton, and I don't see it being that big of a, of a discount. Um, as far as, you know, Doug Gottlieb on Twitter, some of the booing in the stadium the other night, Doug Gottlieb, I give, is, is that's low life, low, you know, low crass. Thought you were trying to be cute BS, you know what I'm saying? Doug he, Gottlieb works for Fox News. That's all you need to know. There you go. Like, like, he, like no serious actual sports thing would give him a job. So he went over to Fox News to be an asshole, and he is an asshole. So basically, there you go that's right there. Asshole things to get clicks. That's what he um, did. Yep. And then as far as the fans and Indy, I can understand the booing. It doesn't look good or sound nice. You know what I'm saying? They had high expectations. They are still fans, but Andrew Luck is going to lie for that organization. Listen, mm-hmm. y'all had 20 years of top quarterback play. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't happen in the NFL. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you have to go. You may have to go through some 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 learning curves. I, do they tank and go for a from or a tour? No. Or one of the big quarterbacks this year. I don't think so, Ben. No. It, it it was interesting, right? So they started the year off. If you went a week ago to bet on Indianapolis Colts, they were at nine and a half wins. Mm-hmm. They were minus money to win the division. You know, they were like, my, it wasn't a lot, but it was, I want to say it was like minus 140 or minus 150, something like that. So as of yesterday, literally as of five minutes after the news broke, because as soon as I saw the news, the first thing I did was go on the sports books and see if anybody was slow to the trigger. And they all had already taken it down or changed it. FanDuel changed it from nine and a half to six and a half wins. So they had Andrew Luck being worth three wins on that team alone. Um, they went from being the favorite to win the division to like plus 400. And the Texans dropped down from, I think the Texans were like plus 300. They dropped down to like plus 140 or plus 150 to win that division, which I actually still think is a little bit of a, a, little bit of a discount. And then some people are also saying the Jacksonville Jaguars in there, um, they dropped from like plus six or 700 to like plus three or 400 um, to win that division right there. So a lot of big moves going on, you know, in the I game. I probably wouldn't touch that. You know what I'm saying? I don't have no real lean right there. It would have been the Colts. And if I had the gun in my head, knock on wood, I would still bet on the Colts. You know what I'm saying? I would go to over on that six and a half. Um, mm-hmm. I, think, I think they can get the seven wins. That's the only part I like that the division is up in the air because your man is going to be running for his life. And I worry about this with Deshaun Watson. He's going to be running for his life. That offensive line stinks. Um, you saw what happened with Lamar Miller this past weekend. I did not get no joy in that. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's like, oh, Lamar Miller, Lamar Miller. And I'm like, listen, I don't want to see Lamar Miller get hurt. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, Duke Johnson uh, is what we have to uh, get on and start to hit on next and figure out what we do with Duke Johnson this last week. Um, my brother-in-law had his home league draft. He took Duke on the 5-6 turn as like a fourth running back. I think that's a perfect slot right there. But I think it may be higher in some other leagues too, Benny. So here's the numbers on Duke Johnson, Corey. Before Sunday, Duke Johnson was going off the board in NFFC leagues as running back 42, um, ADP average draft position of 123. Just Sunday, because I, I wanted to do it from the time the news was known until today. So from just Sunday until today, um, Duke Johnson was going – RB, I'm sorry, from Saturday and Sunday, Duke Johnson moved all the way up to RB29, um, all the way up to ADP64. So basically cut his ADP in half. As of yesterday, if you just took Sunday, so after the news was known, not counting any of the drafts from earlier in the day on Saturday, just Sunday he was up to 27, um, RB58 ahead of Tevin Coleman. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would think that he would be ahead of Coleman because um, he's like the only show in town right now. You know what I'm yep. saying? 
and that, that that's where he's going is 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 good is a good spot. When you look at it manually, Benny, I am not. I'm ready to go ahead of Drake. Obviously, I'm ready to go ahead of Geis. Yes. I would go ahead of Sanders. Yes. Montgomery. Yes. In that range right there, I would. I told. I said Geis already. He's about where Duke, where Tevin Coleman is. That's that's about the right spot. So that's like in that in that mid twenties range. Yep. That's and I mean honestly, I wouldn't even doubt if he winds up a little bit higher than RB twenty seven and and pick fifty eight overall by the time this all sorts itself out, because there are still a couple guys that were going ahead of him that I was looking at and saying, nah, I might have pushed him ahead of him or I might have pushed him ahead of him. Um, but I think that's, you know, I think your brother got him right at the right, at the right time. Your brother-in-law got him right at the right time. I mean, you're looking at fifth, sixth round would be around pick 60. Uh-huh. And with him going 58 and ADP in a lot of these drafts this weekend, um, you know, 64 overall th- this weekend in those drafts, I-, I think that's about where he belongs. So I think by the end of this, Corey, like if you're drafting this week, you probably got to get him before – I don't think he's going to be there in the sixth round for you. I think you're going to have to get him fifth round at the latest. You may even have to go up into the fourth by the time it's all set. I, I would agree. I think that's where the value lies at. Listen, Duke Johnson's a very good football player. He's had a lot of opportunities. Mm-hmm. What I don't like is now that he gets an opportunity, he's going to be playing behind one of the worst offensive lines in the league. But we do know what Duke Johnson Jr. can do as a pass-catching running back. So you know what I'm saying? you got two Miami running backs in Houston, and now you have one. Lamar, Lamar Miller goes down. Duke Johnson steps up. He gets that role. Benny, a team with a surplus of running back is are the Buffalo Bills. Uh, you obviously know we obviously know that the Houston Texans have an asset in Jadavion Clowney that they're looking to move. I don't not, not I'm not speculating on where he could have gone to go. The Philadelphia Eagles have running backs in their backfield that mm-hmm. you know that that can be used as trade chips. I don't think Clowney would ever be traded to Buffalo, but if something was to happen with Yeldon or maybe even McCoy, I can see the Houston Texans being a team that jump into that mix because Alfred Blue ain't there no more, Benny. Neither is Steve Slayton or Ben Tate. So they got to go. They got to wow, go. Man, you just took me down memory lane with some of those things right there. <laughs> so we got to look at right now the job belongs to um, Duke Johnson. One way or another, I think they're going to add something to this backfield. Like, I, I still think it's Duke Johnson's backfield right now. Like, I think he's the guy you want to own. But, like, you know, I was looking through the, the backup names that they have behind him. They need to do something here. So, whether it's, I don't know, Carlos Hyde gets, hut, gets cut and they add him or, you know, if there's another running back who gets cut in the next week or so, my guess is they're going to bring something else in here. But at least for the beginning of the season, like, there's a big gap between Duke Johnson and the guys behind him in this backfield. So, I think Duke Johnson early on. Duke Johnson is a guy who now is going to wind up very highly owned in DFS the first weekend because he's probably very, very cheap. And with the role that he has now, he, he's going to wind up being one of those guys that's 60% owned in tournaments and honestly probably should be if he's underpriced. Uh, well, let's, let's wrote a song about it. Benny, like the head, head go. Um, Here we go. Yeah, tell, tell, tell me some numbers on Duke Johnson so I can start building my teams around them right now. Put it down. Let's just say I'm going deep down the list, Benny. He might even be a min price. Like, he might even be down there at 3K because they, they kind of had him buried and they weren't expecting him to do much of anything in Cleveland. So 3,500. Yeah, again, 3,500, if you're going to give him 15 to 20 touches, you're not going to find a better value than that. So this is a guy that, you know, just – just go plug him into your DFS lineups for week one and then kind of build around it because, you know, that, that he's going to pay off that salary. All right. Um, so that was kind of some of the big news in fantasy from over the weekend. I think, like I said, my brother-in-law had the draft. I think he started McCaffrey. And he, or he, he had the third – I think he had the third pick or the second pick. He had the second pick. He started McCaffrey, came back in that second round, took carry on Johnson, came back in three, took Mike Evans as a wide receiver one, so I think it kind of worked out. I don't remember the whole team. Like I said, I know Duke Johnson was on that team and um, some other pieces. Um, he got a Baker Mayfield, which is a guy that he was really attached to and wanted a lot. So I meant to ask you about this, Corey. You know what I saw this week? I saw draft on – is either Friday night or Saturday night? I don't remember. Um, your boy Zeke dropping into the second round. Oh, I would, I, would be, I would be all over that. I think Zeke is in by the end of the week. I think they get this thing worked out. I think you get a Zeke – also, watch out for Alfred Morris in Houston, too. If Alfred Morris gets cut by the Cowboys when Zeke reports, 
Alfred Morris very well could be a guy that um could have some value for a team like the Houston Texans. Mm-hmm. Kind of bounced around a lot and uh solid running back. Uh, he needs to be in a system with a good offensive line, which is not the case in Houston. Mm-hmm. Does Houston's mm-hmm. offensive line scare you off of Deshaun Watson and DeAndre Hopkins? Not really, because Watson can move. Yeah. If Watson was a stationary quarterback, if Watson was Tom Brady, it would scare the shit out of me. <laughs> but the fact that he can move and he can you know, the fact that he can move and he can make things happen outside the pocket. You know, like, it's, it's okay to have a bad offensive line as long as you realize you have a bad offensive line and you set up your scheme to help your quarterback, you know, move the pocket, make sure the tight end and, or the running backs are chipping on those guys on the outside. You know, again, you don't have to give the guy an hour to throw the ball. You just need to give him four seconds. You give me three seconds, that's, that's basically what you normally get in the NFL. If you can give me four seconds, any NFL quarterback should be able to pick a defense apart in that much time. So – if you can give me a chip, if you can help somebody out, if you can, if you can just keep guys out of my face long enough for me to make the reads I need to re- make, you could be a successful quarterback anyway. And I think Deshaun, Wa- I think Watson is one of those guys that doesn't need, you know, all the time in the world because he can create some time with himself. Not even just running, but just like just sliding in the pocket, just finding the, you know, finding the soft spot where he can set his feet and make a throw. So I mean, yeah, I would rather him have a good offensive line, but. I don't think it scares me as much as it would a, you know, a, a Philip Rivers and Eli Manning or a Tom Brady being back. Here. I just worry about him taking too many hits and going down the RG three path, or going down the Andrew Luck path. Because Andrew Luck was mobile too. You know what I'm saying? I think that's why that's that's where we're kind of messed up Andrew Luck's shoulder, running from one side of the field to the other side of the field and throwing the ball across the field to the other side. Mm-hmm. It's a shit show. Um, the way they the way they they um handled Andrew Luck's career uh, in Indianapolis. Um. Benny, I like to tell people things before they happen or try to at least. And I'm not saying this to try to be cute. I'm saying this because I've got some good words on this, and I think you'll like this too, Benny. And you probably got some drafts left, and you've got a ton of DFS to be played, Benny. But um, if I was y'all and you still got drafts left, draft Jamison Crowder. Put Jamison Crowder on a fantasy team or two this week because it could pay – tremendous upside well I mean I, I'm not gonna argue with it because he is on my squad so I like that but uh tremendous you know upside. why what what's the um you know what's what's the thought process behind it like what happened this weekend that has you a higher crowd or now let's just say I was told 100 catches is not out of the realm of possibility that's pretty interesting let me see if I still have this up here I want to see where his ADP is because I think I honestly think if he's he might not even be getting drafted in some of these. He does. He is. He's basically free. Like you're getting him way deep in some of these drafts. So let me see. You keep talking while I try to find this. Because now I'm interested. So um no and then you know some it is some you'll hear as the week goes on you'll hear some more stuff on Jamison Crowder. Um so he will be getting drafted by this weekend if, if for the people that's in the know and we are in the no type group so we're going to be drafting him this weekend and some others may start drafting him this weekend also. But he could be absolutely tremendous. He could be the steal of the year. Jamison Crowder is going to be the number one target in the New York Jets offense. Put it like this. Jamison Crowder and, and Sam Darnold have a Tom Brady, Julian Edelman type relationship. They are like BFFs. You know what I'm saying? Right. That is his undoubted favorite target is Jamison Crowder. And Crowder and we work out the slot. So that's an that's it's always it trips me out when one of the kids walk behind you, Benny, because yeah. <laughs> it, it, it happens all the time. I, I I don't even bother. I get used to it right now. All right, so here's some here's some numbers for you, Corey. All right, throughout the entire throughout the entire draft season, you know, like since the beginning of draft season, basically, Jamison Crowder has been wide receiver fifty seven, ADP one fifty eight over on the um. NFFC site, right? That's, that's the ADP that I use for a lot of my stuff. So more recently, just going off of the last, not even the last week, the last five days, basically, he is up to wide receiver 53. So he's moved up a little bit, but his ADP has gone from 158 to 127. So you're talking 13th round to 10th round. Yeah. So that, and that, and that's a good range for him. Um, in the PPR, take a shot on him, put him in your roster. If it don't work, it don't work. But Jameson Crowder, as long as he's healthy, he'll definitely be a player that you'll be happy that you have 
on your team. And I wouldn't be surprised if he makes your starting lineup at some point because he's got an opportunity right here in New York. I think he's going to take full advantage of it. Um, that one right there. Also, the Darius guys know he had a good weekend this weekend. Stuff. I'm not saying this because I hate him. I, I drafted the kid all over the place that, last year. I think mm. he's be very good. Also, Darius, pump the brace a little bit on Darius guys. It's going to be a committee there. Can he emerge as the leader? Yes, he can. But it's going to be a committee to start. And Darius guys, they got players on that team. And Adrian Peterson and Chris Thompson that do the same thing that Darius guys do. So they're going to get a mix of those guys in there. And the loss of Trent Williams brings that Redskins offense down. So it's interesting to see if they can get him signed in there. Or maybe he's the guy that goes to Houston and then help that offensive line in Jadavian County joins the team in D.C. Um, That's an interesting trade. That's an interesting yeah. trade proposal right there. But I, I just wanted to say, too, I agree with you on Gary, um, Darius Geis. As of right now, Adrian Peterson is still listed as the first-week starter for Washington. Yep. So I think at best the two of them are splitting carries. And then the other thing, too, that you mentioned, like Chris Thompson's a good running back, especially pass-catching running back. So there's just not going to be enough opportunity outside of some injuries helping and opening something up for Darius Geis to really shine and have a big game. And then you got to understand Darius Geis is going to get a rookie quarterback place in the center at some point this season, too. So that yeah. offense, you don't know what it's going to look like once uh, Haskins takes over. And I got a good feeling that Haskins will take over at some point this uh, season. Mm -hmm. uh, it's another player I want to uh, tell you all about right quick. I mean, my mind is running um, do 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 I pull up my cheat sheet. My fantasy executive cheat sheet that's not allowed to be seen by anyone. Do um, <laughs> uh, you even let your brother-in-law use it when he does his drafts? You know what's so crazy about it? I did read some of the stuff to him, and he put some of the players on his team. Okay. Uh, hold on one second. Uh, we told you all about Taylor Gabriel. Uh, expect a bounce back from Jarvis Landry. Um. That's a name that's kind of dropping, too. People, people aren't talking about Jarvis Landry all that much. I mean, you got to think that Odell Beckham kind of opens things up for him. I, my biggest thing is when people look at Jarvis Landry, right, you look at the Miami days when he, when he was putting up 100 catches and seeing like 10 balls a game. I, I, I just don't see that. I don't see him getting that kind of volume. I mean, we saw the volume drop on him the second half of the season last year when a new offensive coordinator and everybody took over. And then adding Odell Beckham in, it just – we see it all the time when you take a, a number one receiver and you add another number one receiver to the same team, one guy still gets the volume and the other guy winds up really seeing the drop in volume. And I don't see them throwing the ball more to Landry than I do to Odell. Beckham. He won't be a six, seven catch a game guy. He's not going to be that. He's to be more like a, a four or five catch a game guy. You know what I'm saying? Um, Leonard Fournette and the Jacksonville Jaguars are uh, running game. If you want to invest in Fournette, invest in Fournette and the kid Armstead. Put those two together. Put it like this. If Fournette can give you – when Fournette's on the field, Fournette's going to be carrying football. He's going to be carrying the football. He's going to be catching the football. He's going to be a three-down workhorse back. If Fournette happens to get hurt, then Rafael Armstead is the back that will step in right behind Fournette. He'll be a part of a timeshare, but the upside is limited on Alfred Blue. So if you're in a situation this weekend where you've overlooked Fournette and Fournette happens to be there – um, you're not, Fournette is not a zero. You know what I'm saying? Nick Foles can bring some different things to that offense. So Fournette's a player. Um, he's a package. Him and Rockwell Armstead is a package. If you come out there with those two together, you know what I'm saying? You could have an RB1 on your hand between those two guys, Ben. So where do you – let me ask you a question. Where, uh, do you have a lot of Fournette yourself? Zero Fournette. Yeah, I don't think I do either. Where do you think the right spot to draft him is? He should be going around where Carrion Johnson is going. So that Carrion Johnson, Devonta Freeman, Josh Jacobs, Chris Carson area, he's in there with those guys. So like third round? Third round. I think that's part of the reason why I don't have a lot of them is – Are oh, you going to start three running backs? If you start three running backs, I can see him being your third. If you are in the third round and you got one running back and one wide receiver, I don't want my second running back to be Leonard Fournette. Yeah, that's kind of the way I've gone about it. And like, also, unless I got like $25 on the league that I could experiment with. It. But if I got – if it's a league with over, you know, with over three, four digits for the entry fee, Benny, mm -hmm. I'm probably not going to fool with Leonard Fournette. See, I think my biggest problem is all the other names that you mentioned, right? Like if I'm in the third round and on Johnson's on the board, I'd rather him than Fournette. 
I'd rather, I, I even have more Devonta Freeman, I think. I think, I, you know, I'd rather mess with Devonta Freeman more than I'd rather mess with Fournette. And the thing is, like, I don't dislike Fournette. I think Fournette, like, I'm, I'm going to use Fournette a lot in Daly. When yeah. he's healthy and the matchups are right, like, because he's their offense. Like, we've seen them just feed this guy, like, and I'm not even talking 20 touches. I'm talking straight 20 carries. Like, we've seen them just hand the ball to this guy on every single freaking play. And then, like you said, he's even going to catch a couple passes out of the backfield. I love Fournette. My problem in season long with him is I, I know he's going to get hurt. Like, I know he's not playing 16 games. Yeah. And then when you look at some of these other guys, that's really what the factor into it is, right? It's like, you know, yeah, the talent's there. Yeah, he's going to have some big games. But is he going to be around for me in week eight? Is he going to be around for me in the playoffs? You know, I, I mean, that's I was told either one of two things. He could either lead the league in rushing or he could be on the IR by October 1st. <laughs> I, I, but that's, and that's the problem is the, you know, we talk about the risk and reward of all these picks. If he drops to like the end of the third, beginning of the fourth round, all right, I'm willing to take that chance now because if he does stay healthy, I could have a league winner at that point. But if I have to go up for him in the third round at the expense of some of these other guys who we just mentioned here at running back, I don't really know if I'm going to do it. And I haven't done it, which is why – you know, looking at it, I have zero shares of Fournette to this point. He's a tough player. You know what I'm saying? The thing about him is if he hits, um, you know, he can definitely be a league winner. That's, that's, but you know what I'm saying? It, he's he carried the football too much in his collegiate career. I um, mean, I think the same thing could be true for Darius Geis also. Um, speaking of collegiate careers, we got college football underway. We got a couple wins going down uh, with the betting side of college football. We cashed that DJ Dallas. Uh, over 85 and a half. He ran from 89 yards and looked very explosive. Um, he's a player that we could be talking about as a fantasy asset next year. Mm -hmm. um, we did not cash Florida minus seven, but we did cash the Florida money line. We parlayed that with the Hawaii and Arizona over. That game went over early in the fourth quarter. as yep. it may have finished with 90-something points. Those two offenses went, on it, uh, went, went at it. I don't know if you guys uh, saw the end of that game. It was very exciting. Um, did you see it? Yeah, Titans Rams Super Bowl ending, baby. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was very similar to the Steve McNair play. And, and trust me, like we weren't expecting that by this time, right? Mm -hmm. Me and my brother-in-law, we're, we're in the garage now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. dude, it was late by the time that game ended. Yeah, the kids, everybody was asleep, so we was uh, we was doing our thing. You know what I'm saying? So we had, I had to I had the game on my phone. And we see Sun take off, and like, and we're like screaming in amazement, like, "Oh my God, he's going to make it! He's going to make it! He's going to make it!" He gets tackled down at the one yard line. Benny, I didn't until I was sober yesterday, and I saw the, the, the replay of it. They're talking about Khalil Tate, the last play of the game, trying to tie the game up. Benny, he started that run from the thirty yard line. Yeah, a I know. thirty yard walk off. And uh, honestly, nobody I, nobody touched him until he got down into like you know like there wasn't even anybody in the screen until he got down inside the ten yard line. It was like I was like I was like oh he's gonna go he's gonna go. I was like oh he's gonna get there. You know, it was funny. Both of the um neither of the favorites covered the spread the first you know the first two games of college football because Florida won by four. I think it was seven seven and a half depending on when you get in on it. And then the other game was Hawaii playing favorite. Yeah, Hawaii was actually the underdog, and they just won outright. So yeah, um, they, they they turned the football over like seven times, and still yeah. um was able to to get the win. They could not be stopped. They're a team, Hawaii, that um you know if you're if you're if you if you're on tilt, you know what I'm saying? It's a, and it's eleven thirty on a Saturday night. The Hawaii team total going over may not be a bad bet. One of uh one of the most bet on teams in college football every year, along with Notre Dame, still to this day. Because I don't know, I guess all those Irish people with money keep liking to lose it. So yeah, oh uh, yeah, and, and you're right. That that late night, that late Saturday start, that eleven o'clock start is the is the get off the snide start. Um, so there you go. Um, another thing, if you're betting college football, here's a the tip: teams that won a bowl game. They essentially won that game this year or in this calendar year in the last 12 months. Team that won a bowl game to end the season in week, in week one against a team that didn't qualify for a bowl, always, almost always um, win. That was the case with Hawaii and Arizona. You know what I'm saying? So teams that qualified for a bowl game and won it against teams that didn't play in the bowl game or in week one, they, I think they're, they're winning, not just covering the spreads, but winning the game with a 60% clip. And, 
I'm writing this down. I'm writing this down right now so I can I can take a look at this later. So bowl win versus the team that didn't play in a bowl game last year. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right, fair enough. We'll have to look at that. I think we may have I think we may have Thursday night. I think Cincinnati won a bowl game last year and UCLA didn't qualify for a bowl game. And I think Cincinnati might be a small favorite at home, maybe like minus two and a half. But I think their money line is like one sixty. So uh, but that's not so Thursday. We got plenty of time uh until we get to that point right there. Uh how did the MMA go over the weekend, Benny? I didn't think there was any, and if there was, then I didn't bet. Yeah, I didn't bet on it this weekend. Next weekend, though, if anybody's interested, I think it starts at like it's like Saturday morning at like two a.m. or something crazy like that that it starts. So it might be one of those like you know you put some bets in Friday night before you go to bed, and maybe you wake up at like eight in the morning on Saturday and catch like the main event or something. I, I feel like the card is. I want to say it's somewhere international, and I feel like it starts at like a really really weird time where you're either. You're either taking a nap and then staying up all Friday night into Saturday morning or you're, you know, putting your bets in and going to sleep and waking up and just catching the last couple bouts. Uh, FIBA also starts their tournament this weekend, their basketball tournament. Mm -hmm. Team USA News is another piece with Kyle Kuzma headed back stateside to rehab on his ankle injury. They already took a loss to Australia. So you can see this one is going to be a little bit more of an uphill battle than what we've seen from USA basketball in the past. They're still sitting at minus 230, though, Benny. And I'm like, even with a loss and losing Kyle Kuzma, I still like him at minus 230. But I want to get him at minus 185 now. That's where I want the number at, somewhere in that range, because I, I, they just lost another player and they lost the game. I need that minus 230 to come down. Yeah, I mean, I, I still think they're a deserving favorite, but yeah. – I, I don't really want to put my hard-earned money behind it. Not at, not at minus 230. I mean, yeah, not, yeah, exactly. Not at minus 230. To be honest, it would have to get down to, like, minus 150 for me to really be interested. Yeah. <laughs> Benny's like, at this point, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I did see one of the games um, for Saturday morning, I believe it is. I think Puerto Rico plays Iran. Puerto Rico's laying two and a half to Iran. And I'm like, if Puerto Rico can't beat Iran by three points, Benny. <laughs> I didn't even know they played basketball in a round, so whatever, you know. Never knew I ran had a national team, son. All right, Benny. Um, what do we got baseball wise? I hit I hit one yesterday with the with the with the Reds, not with the Reds, with the Cardinals. Mm. On the Cardinals over, so I got that done yesterday to keep the good times rolling from the weekend. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, what what we got going today? Anything? Yeah, nothing really all that great. Um, you know the to me the biggest mismatch is probably um Sunny Gray. Uh, Sunny Gray. Cincinnati against Miami Marlins. Um, the problem is you're not getting very good odds on it. Yeah. The other game that I'm kind of interested in is the Dodgers, right? Uh, young kid, Dustin May, pitching for them. He's not bad. I, I, the, the jury's still out, in my opinion, on him. I, you know, he had – he's pitched good games against craft teams, and he's kind of got knocked around a little bit against, like, the Braves and, and even these San Diego Padres. But, you know, without Fernando Tatis, this, ah, the San Diego lineup is just so bad. Yeah. Um, so I'd be willing to take May right there against them. He's only minus one. The Dodgers are only minus 148 against the um, San Diego Padres, which just kind of felt a little bit low to me. So my favorite bet of the day is probably the Dodgers at minus 148. But I got to be honest, it's only a seven-game slate tonight, and, and not a lot of it is really looking at appealing. Getaway day in Major League Baseball. So don't forget elite sports betting. Um, they get you all the way squared away, whatever your sport is. All right, Benny, before we get out of here, I got to give a big piece of chicken to Andrew Luck. Did it for six year, good years, Indianapolis coach quarterback. Um, so, Andrew Luck, you get the big piece of chicken as you walk away from football. Yeah, I mean, I was going to give him the big piece of chicken as well, but I'll go and give mine to Lamar Miller. Um, you know, bad injury that he suffered this week. I watched it. It's one of those where you look away when you see the replay on it. Um, but listen, as much as we crack on Lamar Miller and as much as we're like, we don't want this guy for fantasy – this guy has been a productive NFL player for a good long time here. I mean, even on, on the Dolphins before he came over here to the, the Houston Texans. Has he ever been a star? Is he the kind of guy that's going to win you your fantasy, you know, championship? Probably not, but he has been productive. And, you know, I, I'm hoping he can bounce back from it, but he is getting a little bit older. It might have been the last time we've seen Lamar Miller here, Corey. I would not be surprised if that was the case, or unless we'll see Lamar Miller uh, shell of himself. We'll keep it going through the rest of the week, taking you up through the weekend on the big holiday, get you ready for all your last-minute drafts. It is the opening line for the Elite Fantasy Sports Network.